Yo, it's your boy, so we're meta video. Today's video, we're going to be trying to give you guys some of the best tips to help you guys win Madden games right now and currently help you get better at the game. Before we go ahead and get into all the tips and tricks to help you guys out, if you guys are new, I highly recommend and would appreciate if you guys would leave a like and subscribe for more Madden 25 and NFL analysis video. And we also do post NFL analysis such as power rankings and just overall opinion based questions and we make content about that as long with Madden 25 rebuilds so I appreciate if you guys would go ahead and check that out but let's go ahead and get into those tips so number one is show blitz so when you are on defense and you press Y and then you hit the right bumper you will show a blitz and you can help it will help if they're doing like a run. So again, you hit Y and RB. Watch those safeties. As you see them creep up a good three to four steps. And that is obviously going to be better if that your opponent is throwing short or if they're doing a run right there. I mean, Saquon kind of went to the weak side of the field, but we're still able to get them for a minimal gain right there. Number two, you're when you're running the ball, you're going to want to let your blocks develop. What do I exactly mean by that is don't go ahead and hit your burst if you don't know, when you hold down the right trigger, obviously it gives you an acceleration burst. If you didn't know, don't go ahead and hold that down right away. Instead, you're going to want your blocks developed. I'm not saying wait forever in the backfield, but as you can see right here, I didn't go right into the lineman. As you see, Kyle Pitts picked up that linebacker, and I'm able to get to the second level. Then I use my burst once I am two yards past the line of scrimmage, and I'm able to break it off for a big time gain. Now, Obviously, not every single time you're going to want to do that, but I recommend not using your burst the second you get the ball. Now, next off is the spin move and slash juke. The spin move is actually broken this year. As you see right there, I spin to get out of a tackle. The spin move is absolutely dangerous this year, and you can do it by hitting B on Xbox or Circle on PlayStation. So, it's very easy to do. It's a very easy concept. Uh, the juke move is still good. As you see right there, I would have ran into my blocker because he didn't really hold up that great of a block, and that's just where my kind of guy was going, but I was able to cut it to the right, and I was able to lose a little bit less yards. So juking is really good, but the spin move is really good this year, so try to do it as much as you can. Next thing is canceling play action pass. As you see right here, I did a play action. That's how long it would normally take to develop. Ignore the fact that I got sacked. I'm not going to be throwing it until fourth down. But as you see right here, I want to show you guys when it's canceled. So you can cancel by holding RT, the acceleration boost, with your quarterback. And boom, he's standing right there. Play doesn't need to develop. I would do this against CPUs a lot more than I would do it against users. Because it wouldn't really fool the users as much. But as you see right there, when your quarterback is starting to come get in the motion for the play action to develop, you can just hit RT and it will cancel it right away. So watch Josh Allen right here. And then boom, it is done. And as you see right there, X is still open. And then again, that spin move is so deadly. You guys, you see right there, Amari Cooper is able to get a spin move, and he's going to go all the way and get a touchdown. But if you guys are very impatient, I wouldn't recommend getting caught up on always doing this because, again, I don't feel like it will be that helpful against users. I would definitely do that more against CPUs. Number five, beating man coverage. And the best tip I can give you for beating man coverage is you want to go ahead and make sure your wide receivers are running the right routes. Now, the drag route is a very simple route that just works absolutely beautiful in Madden. As you see right here, Romeo Dobbs is going to be put on a drag route. So watch him right here. He's going to get so many extra yards of separation. Jordan Love wasn't able quite to connect, but it's okay. The Raiders weren't even running man coverage in that play. He was technically open. Romeo Dobbs was, but uh, Jordan Love wasn't able to connect. So as you see right here, Tyler Craft or Tucker Craft and Romeo Dobbs both running drag routes, and then you see Romeo Dobbs able to go underneath. Again, the spin move is just that deadly. I was able to get out of a tackle from it again. But yeah, with the drag routes, you can get so many extra yards of separation. Now, the second best route against man coverage is a go route. Now, let's go ahead and put Jaden Reed on a go route. I would only do this half the time. If Maybe if your receiver is really fast and you're not facing that good of an opponent, maybe go to try to do it. I have, honestly had no business catching that ball, but Jaden Reed was able to come down with it somehow. But yeah, the go routes, if you have someone like Tyreek Hill or someone that's really good, then I would go for it. I wouldn't do it every single time knowing they're running man coverage, but it definitely works. 
Uh, next one is cover four. Cover four is so, so underrated for short passes and runs. As see right there, Alex Highsmith was able to go to get the running back. So this is basically two tips and one, honestly. Cover four for short runs. Uh, runs for your opponents and then I would also run cover four if they are throwing short as you see right there TJ Watt came in and smacked him right in the mouth but obviously not every defense has the luxury of having TJ Watt so again let's go ahead and see how the cover four right here I really want you guys to read the safeties and linebackers see right here they're gonna drop back and then they they like it's hard to describe, but they will go ahead and they will help with the safe or they will help with the cornerbacks. Like they will, they will keep back, so you really won't get burned deep. And they are just super protective of up in the front anything that is short. Now, before we go ahead and get to the next step, I wanted to go show you guys a little bit of background coaching adjustments. So you can do tempo; it will do no huddle. You can do deep pass catching, which will have aggressive. It means you can always. Do an aggressive catch, but obviously there's pros and cons to all of this. So if you do an aggressive catch, your chance of doing a rat catch are lower. You can do blocking. It will be aggressive. They will probably give better blocks, but you have a higher chance of getting a holding penalty because you know they're more aggressive. And now ball carrier conservative. If it's on conservative, you have a less chance of fumbling, but you... When you're unconservative, you cannot do any special moves at all, which is really, which does really suck. I mean, you can't juke, you can't do a spin move. Aggressive, you have a higher chance of breaking tackles, and you can still do spin move and juke. But the chances of you fumbling are way higher, and especially with you getting hit sticks. So it's really just up to you guys. So as you see right here, this is a great. This is going to be aggressive right here, or this is conservative. My bad, right there. I'm able to do a juke and a spin. I'm able to do all that stuff. And, you know, I. it's really just up to you. I want you guys to go ahead and make the, make the decision for yourself. If you feel that you can do aggressive and you can get away with it, to go ahead and try to do aggressive. But I see right here on aggressive, you could still do it. All the, all the spin moves, the jukes, all that. But you do have a higher chance of fumbling. Now, if you do have a running back that... I don't know, maybe they have a fumbling problem or maybe they fumble a little bit too much for your liking. I would definitely do conservative. But if you're kind of in the middle and it really just depends on the kind of game you're in, if you're in a close game, I really wouldn't recommend changing it. But if you are losing by a lot, maybe I would do aggressive because you know you're trying to get something. Hard count. So next one, you just hit RB, the right trigger, um, or the right bumper, excuse me, the right bumper to do a hard count, and it might be able to make them to go offside. Now, it doesn't always work, and I would not do it too often, but sometimes you'll be able to get a free uh, free play from their offsides. The next tip in our Tips and Tricks video is the high pass. So that wasn't a high pass right there. I just wanted to show you guys what a regular pass would be looking like in this kind of scenario. Uh, that was Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua is open again, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to Cooper Cup just to show you guys how a regular pass would do in this kind of play. All right, so now watch the ball leave Matthew Stafford's hands. It is a lot higher. The chances of it being intercepted are way lower. Obviously, I know Cooper Cup was still covered. Realistically, you should never throw into like triple coverage like that, but let's have Cooper Cup go to out route just to show you how high it's actually going. You're like, see, he had to jump forward and it went out of bounds. I'm not saying always do a high pass. I'm just saying in certain circumstances, I just want to show you guys what the high pass looks like. So let's go in and do something. Let's put Cooper Cup on a corner route and try to hit his back shoulder on a high pass. This will probably be the best scenario for it. Oh, that was kind of close, but... This is probably would be the best scenario if trying to get like a receiver on their back shoulder, maybe when they're like breaking stride, like that right there. I mean, and that's a touchdown right there, actually. So yeah, exactly like that. So I would do a high pass maybe on a circumstance like that. Again, you got to be, it It will just come natural to you after using it for so long when to use a high pass because like right there, that worked perfectly. And if I did a regular pass, that Chiefs defender underneath might have been able to get a hand on it. So, 
Again, you will get used to it. So let's go ahead and put like Puka Naku on a corner route and see how it works over on his back shoulder now. So that was a regular pass, and obviously it didn't really work as well. The Chiefs defender was able to get it. That was a regular pass, keep in mind. So now let's go ahead and do a high pass and see how it will change it. And it changes it perfectly. That was a perfectly placed ball by Matthew Stafford, and it turns into a touchdown. So it's a big difference, actually. And I, I didn't even think the difference would have been that big, but... As you see, guys, it will just come natural to you if you if this feels overwhelming with the high pass. You know, maybe give it some time. Maybe go and practice. Go in the practice mode like me right now uh, and go ahead and try it out. Like, if you guys are watching this video and you're trying to get better, really, everything I said you're going to want to do, obviously. But it will only come if you know how to do it properly and if you are making the right reads and doing the right actions to win. Anyway, guys, that's a run of the video. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe for more Madden 25 content. I hope you guys learned something new and able to get better at Madden. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys. Bye.